As with all wars, there are a multitude of weapons available for use by competing forces. High-tech mega-weapons used by Air Force and Naval branches of the service are integral parts of a complete military force. However, the infantrymen, ground soldiers and their weapons are ultimately necessary to complete the dirty work to secure a victory. Following is an overview of many of the weapons used by ground troops in World War II. The M1903 Springfield bolt-action rifle was produced from 1903 to 1949, had a five-round magazine chambered in 30 out 3 and 30 out 6 caliber. There were over 3 million produced during its time in production. The 1903s were eventually replaced in World War II by semi-automatic rifles, but at the beginning of the war, there was insufficient inventory of M1 rifles for all troops. It was also used as a sniper rifle during the war. There were two semi-automatic rifles developed for use in World War II, the M1 Garand and the M1 Carbine. Although they sound similar in designation, they are different in design and companies who manufacture each are different as well. The M1 Garand is a 30 6 semi-automatic rifle which was standard issue in World War II. It was named after its designer, John Garand. Most of these rifles were issued to American troops, but there were also hundreds of thousands of them provided to allies as foreign aid. It was issued into service in 1936 and remained as an issued firearm until 1958. It was manufactured by normal arms manufacturers such as Springfield Armory, Winchester, Harrington and Richardson, and Beretta. Non-typical arms manufacturers such as International Harvester were also used by military procurement. Interesting statistics include almost five and a half million produced, costing the government $85 each during the war. It weighed nine and a half pounds, was 43 and a half inches long, and had an effective firing range of 500 yards, and was fed by eight round magazines. General George Patton called it, quote, the greatest battle implement ever devised, end quote. The other semi-automatic rifle developed for World War II was the M1 carbine. I'm guessing some people will call me out and say it's pronounced carbine. Pronounce it however you like. I've just always been a carbine guy. Anyway, the M1 carbine was in service in the U.S. military from 1942 to 1973. It was developed because the military determined that a lighter, more compact, semi-automatic rifle was needed in lieu of the heavier, more bulky M1 Garand currently in service. It was specified that the newer semi-automatic have a range of 300 yards and that specification was met with the M1 carbine. Here are some other specifications and data of interest. The design took place from 1938 to 1941, and over 6 million were produced for the military from 1942 to 1945 at a cost to the government of $45 per unit. It weighed in at 5.2 pounds with a length of 35.6 inches. It fired a 30 carbine bullet at a rate of 750 rounds per minute with a 15 or 30 round detachable magazine. Although the M1 carbine had some limitations with respect to sheer firepower, it was generally accepted as an important part of the U.S. arsenal of weapons in World War II. The Browning M1918 automatic rifle is the family of hand-carried automatic rifles and machine guns 
designed by John Browning and originally developed for use in World War I. Even though it did see action in World War I, it didn't become standard issue in the Army until 1938, and by that time a bipod had been introduced to the weapon to make it more of a ground-operated machine gun as opposed to a hand-carried automatic rifle as originally designed. Despite improvements to the original M1918, the improved M1918A2 was a difficult weapon to master and was not without operational problems in the field. Specifications include dates of production 1918 to 1945. Over 350,000 were built at a cost to the U.S. government of $320 each. Weight was 19 pounds, length 47 inches. Rate of fire 5 to 600 rounds per minute. Feed system 20 or 40 round box magazine. As a side note, the German machine gun equivalent to the M1918A2 was the MG42 and would be considered superior to the BAR with its 1200 to 1500 rounds per minute capability. It came to be known as Hitler's buzzsaw. The Thompson submachine gun or Tommy gun was first introduced in 1918 and became famous in the Prohibition era being used by both criminals and law enforcement. It was adopted by the military in 1938 and used during World War II and beyond. There were two type magazines used to feed ammunition to the weapon, the drum magazine and the box magazine. Even though the drum magazine held more rounds, 50 or 100, the box type magazines with 20 or 30 round capacity were more popular among users because of lower weight and ease of use. The Tommies were prized by military soldiers lucky enough to have the use of one. Not only were they effective, it was just downright cool to operate one. There were around one and three quarter million Thompsons made in the World War II era and cost per unit varied from as high as $209 to as low as $45. They weighed in at around 11 pounds, were almost 34 inches in length, utilized a 45 ACP cartridge, had an effective range of 164 yards with a 700 to 800 rounds per minute rate of fire. The Tommy gun had limitations, but was an effective and prized weapon of World War II. The M1911 pistol, designed by John Browning and manufactured by Colt and various other manufacturers, was the sidearm issued to U.S. troops in World War II. 1.9 million units were procured for military use during the war. The pistol weighs in at 39 ounces, is 8 and 1 half inches long, utilizes the 45 ACP cartridge, has a rate of fire of 85 rounds per minute, and a 7 or 8 round box magazine feed system. Though limited in effective range, soldiers that were issued the M1911 welcomed the opportunity to carry a sidearm into battle. Other weapons with specialized uses utilized by World War II soldiers include grenades, flamethrowers, and anti-tank bazookas. The fighting men of World War II were well-trained, motivated, patriotic, and ultimately successful in defeating formidable adversaries during tough circumstances. The soldiers of the greatest generation went above and beyond the call of duty and performed great feats during difficult and trying times. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up, make a comment, 
And most important of all, subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching.